You can stay in Wonderland, or you can go down the rabbit hole and see just how deep the Matrix's plot holes actually are. Whoa. So you know that whole thing of humans being used as fancy batteries for the machines? Well, it's a terrible idea when you get down to the simple science of it, because quite frankly, we're bad sources of power. Humans tend to consume more than we produce, with alternatives such as windmills and nuclear power providing much better results in the long run. In fact, this is one topic that has raged on ever since The Matrix was released over two decades ago. Some fans even wonder why the machines didn't use cows or other large mammals instead of humans, because then they wouldn't need to create the whole shebang of an illusion or go through all that effort for such little power. Also, if humans are so difficult to control and you need to keep them pacified, why don't the machines just put everyone in a coma? Remove their ability to be conscious and you'll still be able to harvest their energy, right? Seriously, there was no need to overcomplicate this here. Or maybe it was just an oversight. And what's the deal with the machines flushing out the red pills in the first place? In theory, the red pills are supposed to be defective batteries, right? They serve no real purpose to the machines and are meant to be cast aside. Yet, instead of disposing of them, they keep them alive and allow them to become rebels. Uh, did the machines suddenly grow a conscience or something? Because this is a bit of a head scratcher. It doesn't make sense why the red pills would be kept alive in this scenario since they serve no purpose here. Sure, it might sound a little harsh, but if you have no need for something, you toss it into the trash and get rid of it, right? Instead, the machines just quietly let a rebellion build against him. Dummies. Now, let's talk about the topic of the one. At last. We all know the Oracle told Morpheus that it was his destiny to find the one. Cool, that's fine. And we also know that Morpheus dedicated his entire life to finding him. Still makes sense. But how did Morpheus know that Neo was the exact person he was searching for? Essentially, he was looking for a needle in a haystack because even when we meet Neo in the first Matrix movie, he isn't anything special. Because out of everyone in the world, how did Morpheus know this is his guy? The Oracle must have given him a lot more to go on off screen, because the Chosen One prophecy feels way too much like a gamble here. It's like you are told to find someone named Chris. Good luck in finding the right one here. And speaking of Neo, have you ever wondered why the agents needed to bug him in order to track him? It was extremely gross and unsettling to see that mechanical bug enter Neo's belly button. Also, the agents could see if he would lead them to Morpheus. However, it sounds like they went through a whole lot of effort for nothing here. Remember how Morpheus revealed to Neo how they kept tabs on him? The crew just looked at the system's green code and found out where he was and what he was doing. So why don't the machines do the same thing? Isn't this code the very thing that they designed in the first place? It kind of feels like when you're looking for your keys but they're in your hand. The machines had the solution right there, literally under their nose, but they forgot how to use it. Someone must have forgotten to update the operator manual or something here. But let's keep the focus on the agents here for another minute because they're also incredibly peculiar. Watching them in motion, they're proper machines, being able to bend time and space to their will. Bullets are practically useless against them as they're able to dodge them quicker than you can dodge your bosses over time requests, yet they're susceptible to punches and kicks. Huh, now that is odd. Especially since it's never really revealed why they're more likely to be defeated by hand-to-hand -hand combat than weapons. Like, seriously, would you rather face John Wick in a gunfight or Bruce Lee in a regular brawl? Sure, you're bound to lose both battles, but bullets move a lot faster than body parts, right? Guns. Lots of guns. It's much easier to dodge a kick or a punch to the face than it is a round of ammunition. But hey, those agents don't seem like they were the sharpest tools in the binary shed. Because not only were they suckers for, well, sucker punches, but they forgot about their body hopping possibilities a little too often, especially when they needed it the most. The agents are meant to have the ability to possess the body of any blue pill near them, being able to hop almost instantly. Yet they hardly use this extraordinary power when it would have made sense. What are you trying to tell me? like the time when Trinity was surrounded by the police. Surely this would have been the right opportunity to switch bodies and put a stop to her plan. Boom, the machines win. The end. Unfortunately, it also means the Matrix would have been a lot more boring, since it would have made the agents far too OP. Though, you have to question why the writers gave them these powers in the first place if they're being picky about where they use them. I mean, it's like Superman taking a bus to the Fortress of Solitude when he has the power to fly there. It just doesn't make sense. Ironically, this is not far from the truth. 
And while we're on the topic of nonsensical things, what's up with the sunglasses? Yeah, the trench coats look cool and badass, even with the whole late 90s aesthetic, but why is everyone wearing a pair of shades when a lot of the events take place in the evening? Actually, the answer is simple, because it looks cool and the producers probably received a cool check for the product placement. Still, it feels more like a hindrance than an asset here. If you're stuck in darkness, surely you want more light and the ability to see what's happening around you. Well, if you're anyone else except Neo who possesses all that power. So why would you wear a pair of shades when you're in the dark? Only rock stars do this, but their reason for hiding their eyes is more to do with, ahem, habits than it is for any functional purpose. Do you know what I'm talking about? Now, this might be a spoiler for The Matrix Resurrections, and if so, then it's definitely not a plot hole. But computing in the 90s was much different from today. Most people feared losing their documents and photos due to the unstable nature of storage space. People made backups of backups because they freaked out that something would be lost. So are you telling us that the machines didn't have backups of all their technology in virtual worlds? Since this was back in the late 90s and early 2000s, they'd probably only need a CDR to hold all that info. But yeah, it seems highly unlikely that there are no backups made, just in case something went wrong. It doesn't need to be a server room or anything, but it must exist somewhere. Like, honestly, everyone kept multiple save files for The Sims and Diablo in those days. Speaking about weird things and chosen ones, have you checked out our video about the strangest things cut from the Harry Potter books? And while you're going down the YouTube rabbit hole, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching and stay awesome.